Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today's artist has been recommended by a huge variety of people for a very long time, but she was never the most recommended in our YouTube comments. However, she kept popping up. My students were singing songs by her, patrons were suggesting songs by her, and now I just feel a need to understand Skunk Anansi and their lead singer, Skin. Let's get to it. First impression is, I know I've heard this voice in a couple different places, um, but this is the first time I'm really listening in detail to how she's creating these sounds and she is definitely not auto-tuned. She plays with her pitch and the, the shading on the higher side or a little more spoken, a little more sliding into it. She really is playing with the pitch a lot. And she's playing with the placement of the sound a ton. Um, also, who is this camera guy who has cowboy boots? I think that this is a, a British band. And I was just really surprised to see cowboy boots at the beginning. Okay. Right? Very smooth at walking. But then falls down. Lost in time, I can count the words I said when I thought they went unheard All of those harsh thoughts, so unkind Cause I wanted you It's so cool the way that they're working that camera angle from him being collapsed. Um, she's doing lots of creaks into the sound and really playing with the breath into it as well. So creaks are where you're gonna, where you go like, uh, that kind of sound. It ends up feeling um, very intimate, very personal when you do that. And the way she's using her air, it also kind of does like these sort of like gaspy flows into it at times. But it's so fascinating. I hear little tiny scoops here and there in the pitch and she's, it seems very deliberate what she's doing, or maybe um, more than being deliberate about playing with the pitch, she's just thinking about expressing the words. People work in different ways. Sometimes people are gonna think just about the pitch play. Sometimes people are gonna think about the expressive play. In general, I would say most really fantastic artists will focus on expression during performances and then maybe play with the pitch and little more detailed technical things during practice. Um, but during a performance, you just need to connect with your audience. Words, I said when I thought they went on. Like, listen to how she does they. It, it has a slide off of it, and then it goes into a little fry at the end. Words, I said when I thought they went on. All I love of that those little harsh friend. thoughts. Also, really deliberate choices in her breath placement there between unkind and unheard. Both of those, she took a breath in the middle of the word unkind and unheard. It is extremely deliberate. It's in general considered a no-no 
to take a breath in the middle of a word, but she does it both times and both times it has un as a prefix right before going into the other part of the word. So it's completely deliberate drawing your attention to it. Oh, very interesting. Gosh, thoughts, so unkind, cause I, wanted you. I love that reveal of the car driving away and the side camera. And now I sit here, I'm all alone. So here sits a bloody mess, tears fly. Oh, a circle of angels deep in war Cause I wanted you Ooh, there's something super interesting And now I sit here, I'm all alone So here sits a bloody mess Tears fly home A circle of angels deep in war so I think I'm hearing some play with the amount of closure she has in her glottis, essentially, because I hear times when there's a lot more air in the sound in times when there's a lot less air and becomes more of a condensed or pressed sound. So it's the difference between this and, and this. Those are two really uh, polarized ends just speaking. But if you listen, we'll go back one more time. I'm all alone. So here sits a bloody mess. Tears fly home. So on home, I hear quite a bit of H still in the sound. So aspiration, essentially, of more air coming through the glottis. So that opening space that's between the vocal folds. The vocal folds, right? They go like this in your throat. They go wacka, wacka, wacka to make a pitch. And sometimes they don't have as much complete closure so more air can escape by it and make an airier tone. And now I sit here, I'm all alone. So here sits a bloody mess, tears fly home. A circle of angels, dear. So Ain, when she sings Ain, that has a little more closure on the top. I think she's playing with this, how much aspiration she has in her sound. So here sits a bloody mess, tears fly home, a circle of angels deep in war, cause I wanted you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. So when she started to get to a more belty section where she was singing with a more full sound, I heard less of that air escapage. Um, the air escapage isn't necessarily a bad thing. Escape sounds like it might become a bad thing, but it just affects the tone of the sound and can definitely be used for lots of expression. I love the way she has that airy quality, but also a really full-throated sound. A lot of times we think of something that is airy or breathy, uh, as being ethereal, as like a lovely floaty voice. Maybe it's an angel or a young character, you know. Um, but having the fuller, mature sound uh, also lower, and then having the breathiness in it and, and a little more gut in the sound as well, um, it has a unique quality to it that I very much enjoy. And then when she got to the chorus, it had more of a belted quality, meaning she was going up in a lower register still, not flipping over on her register, but singing very strongly. And I heard more closure in the chords. That makes sense. If you have the air, like a little more open space between your chords and you go up like that, it can be easier for the chords to just split apart and crack. You kind of need to be keeping them closed, more cleanly closed, especially when you're going up to the top. Uh, in a full, full register like this. Ooh, 
I that harmony was great. <laughs> I when I saw these guys pick her up off of the ground, I I thought like they they were just like security, but I think they're band members. <laughs> The way that the instrument showed up in a grocery cart was also uh, quite shocking. I just, I didn't expect instruments to show up in a grocery cart. Uh, it's very uh, interesting, a skewed camera frame still. This is an interesting video. I want so, if I open my heart, there'd be no space for air, cause I wanted you. It's got so much style. Weak as I am. so interesting um i was recently listening to another song um by shine down and brent was leaning into the ah vowels in that song and she's doing the exact same thing leaning into these ah vowels as i am and i have to say ah vowels in particular are fantastic for belting a lot of times if we're going to work on belting, especially for women, um, we'll do an yeah kind of exercise, almost like just Y-E-A-H, but sometimes going yeah. And that helps keep the mouth open as you're going up because you don't want to clench your jaw. A lot of times you say drop for the top, right? But it helps keep the sound really far forward and gathered. Again, you don't want it to split apart and crack. Um, helps keep that tongue high as well. A lot of times people will mistakenly um, add a lot of tongue tension when they're going high because um, the larynx wants to bop up. And so if you don't have enough lower breath support, sometimes there'll be this sort of secondary support that engages and the tongue root pushes the larynx down. So uh, yeah, helps keep the tongue up in the back. So it's just an excellent, excellent vowel for belting. And uh, I think this is a great song if you're working on belting to sing along with because of the way she's approaching these ab vowels over and over. some good band camaraderie I don't know there's a a child person I don't know I assume it's a child because this looks like a toy that you bounce on that I had in preschool um but maybe it's an adult I'm not sure it looks fun Okay, this kid, this kid's hilarious. Um, I want to just speak to the originality. I feel that she has developed a very original and unique sound. Um, the way she's playing with the air and the sound, again, the fullness of it. Um, she also plays with where it is located in here, though she often is making it more forward even though she has a very full-throated sound. Uh, and her style, the way she moves, there's um, so much about skin that just feels unique and very, very original to me. Okay, then go back. In this tainted soul in this week, young, but am I too bad for you? <laughs> I 
Oh my gosh, that's so funny. She's just like, kid, we're making a music video. I wonder if that was deliberate. I feel like it was deliberate. Not sure. Must be deliberate. Really interesting to watch the mouth movement as she's going through it. It's not ah, ah, ah. She actually does a little raise of the tongue to help sort of refresh the vowel as she's going down. Did you see that? The, the shift of the tongue up as she's going down. It's still an ah vowel the whole time, but she actually refreshes it with like almost a um, approximation towards a Y. That's a great belt on top. This is funny. I, <laughs> I'm not sure what the kid had to do with the meaning of the song overall. I definitely looked at the lyrics ahead of time and thought, uh, I really appreciate the independence and um, the feeling overall of self-worth in the song. You know, this idea of I'm still worth a lot. Like, am I too much for you? Even though I'm, I'm weak, it, it sounds like the person still has self-value within the relationship, which is kind of cool. That was my interpretation. There may be many other interpretations, but this kid is hilarious. And I feel like there's something about the kid and maybe it's a different relationship between parents and kid that we're talking about. Not sure again. Um, but I am sure that she has a fantastic belt. She even lets a little bit of that air into the sound with that fullness up there. It's crazy. And she really mixes in a little bit of head voice too. So you get a little more CT or cricothyroid action to help that sound um, slender up and not just fall apart. Back to that reassertion she did. It sounds like she's like not only reasserting at a laryngeal level between her vocal folds there, but she also sounds like she's doing a little more of that Y approximation again to help reassert the note. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. She also sounds like she has tons tons of body support under her top belt. It's definitely something that is supported lower in the body. She's not just making this here. She's not just supporting with her shoulders or trying to have some clavicular breathing and support. No, she's definitely down low in her support system. <laughs> I thought this was gonna go longer. Oh. I definitely felt like that song should be longer. I think I've just been spoiled by metal, if you will, because metal songs are, you know, seven or eight minutes usually. And I wanted to have more time to dig deeper into her sound. It is very unique. I am extremely curious about where she developed her technique from, how she came about this full sound that is so original at the same time. Oh, it's, yeah, it's fascinating. Thank you to all of you for this 
fantastic recommendation. If you would like to see some more really awesome vocals analyzed, you can check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.